Oh, where we get them with the, the first round and Salif who stands at a huge six foot seven inches tall. And not only throughout this long and illustrious career as he actually fought in the ring against some of the big names and some of the greats. But if you look at who he's been involved with as a sparring partner, he was involved with, uh, he prepared with Hasim Rachman for both of the fights with uh, Lennox Lewis. He's worked with Mike Tyson. He's worked with James Tony. He's worked everywhere. So he knows just about every trick of the trade. And uh, he's coming here off the back of a performance against another really hard to put away guy, Friday Ahunanya, who we saw uh, sometime last year against uh, David Tua. So uh, I think we might be in here for the long haul unless Petkovic is in top shape here and as sharp as he was at his peak. Yes, yeah, Salif's... Um record you know it only tells half the story doesn't it when you spar in the likes of rackman and especially james tony mm. believe you me salif will have learned so much and that's why you know he he, he is such a hard man to be and actually to to drop to actually put on the canvas when you've been with the likes of james tony and rackman then you will have earned your money as a sport sparring partner yeah, there's been a, a dramatic drop in the quality of some of the fighters that uh, Petkovic has fought as he tried to build up that record. Five of the nine he's fought in the most recent selection of fights have won three or under. Uh, but he did fight a draw with uh, Timo Hoffman uh, just over a year ago. So he should be used to uh, fighting fighters that are, are taller than him because pretty much everyone in this division is. And Timo Hoffman's a good 6'8", 6'9", as well. So he's going to have to get inside, isn't he, and do some work to Salif's yeah. body at some point. But there's some decent jabs there from Petkovic. He's landed with that shot a few occasions in this round. One fault that Salif has got, he's got a slow jab and he brings it back just to his chest. So he's open to a right hand over the top. So Petkovic maybe should target that punch also. And again, good indication of that jab that you were talking about. And but he just bounces off that granite chin of uh, C.C. Salif's. You've got to say, actually, that Petkovic, looking at his conditioning coming into the ring tonight, he doesn't look as well conditioned as he has done in the past. No, I'm a bit surprised there, to be quite honest. I thought um, it had prepared better. But, yeah, he's, he's carrying a few too many pounds around the midsection there. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. it's a little bit low. Time. Okay. End of the first round then, and uh, relatively satisfactory for Petkovic, as he said. CC Salif took this fight at relatively short notice. Uh, so, mind you, but as we said, his, his conditioning, his stamina is very good. Maybe in the later rounds, we'll find out just how much work Petkovic has indeed done in the gym. This schedule for 10, remember. Well, I think they'll be fairly pleased in that corner. I think he won that opening round. Not a lot in it. Uh, but uh, Petkovic definitely landed with the better jabs. And I think they were just having a look at each other, weren't they? So uh, we expect things to just hotten up a little bit more and the tempo Ladies just to raise four, over the next two or three rounds. So round two then of this scheduled 10. CC Salif ambling toward the centre of the ring. Began as an amateur back in the mid-1990s in Paris and was seen regularly around the scene there. He, he didn't lose as an amateur. He was unbeaten. He didn't fight that many times, mind you. If you actually do a bit of research into the fact after you read the he didn't get defeated as an amateur, you'll find out he only fought nine times. Time. Another left hook there to the body. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Yes, OK. That was definitely a low shot. It was a left hook okay? from Salif. Okay. So that's Time twice in. now. He'll have to watch it. But at this pace that they're finding out at the moment, uh, Salif will have no trouble dealing with this okay, whatsoever. Okay, 
Okay. Well, the, the, the pace of the contest is suiting Salif better than it is Petkovic, to be quite honest. If I was Petkovic, I'd be up in the pace. Obviously, Salif has took it at short notice, but he looks in the better condition. I mean, like I said, I'm a bit surprised with Petkovic. But looks can be deceiving with heavyweights. Let's point that out. Yeah. Not only is Solis as never comes in there, sweeping left hook then, but it just skims off the chin of Zalif. The reactions these days a little bit slower. He is taking rather more shots than he used to do. And we've been seeing him regularly on our screens for, what, the last five years or so, Zalif. Yeah, Petkovic landed right, with a, a good left hook earlier on, but I, I really would like to see him start throwing that right hand. Barely thrown that shot. He's worked well with his jab and delivered the odd left hook, but so if, as a fairly high on, guard on. with his right hand, but his left hand is so low. He's just open to that right hand. He's trying to do a bit of work to Petkovic's body, but he's not really doing an awful lot. He's not doing much. This is almost where he feels at home. He's sat there inviting Petkovic to come on to him and try and work to his body, but he's pretty well sewn up there. The defence yeah. rock solid. Yeah. Well, he's just taking a little bit of a breather there, to be quite honest, just sitting on the ropes and as if to say, well, come on then, have a go if you want to. But uh, he looked quite confident, didn't he? There was a little smirk there. But not ideal to be on those ropes, but you do see a lot of heavyweights sit on the ropes, come on, come mainly on. because they, they get a bit of a break and a rest. That was a better hook to the body then from Salif. But you often wonder about him when you stand watching this performance in this round again. So few people out there are capable of actually doing him any harm and hurting Hi. him. Why he doesn't take more chances? Because this so far is a fight that he could well have taken the first two rounds, but he hasn't. Oh, the sweat beginning to just roll off the, the body of Pekovic here. Okay. This is easily the best opponent that... Uh, Petkovic has probably met since that fight with Johnny Nelson. Well, there you just heard from his trade, the guy is too slow. The guy slow. is too slow. Yeah, what Petkovic needs to be doing now, Tim, is doubling up his jab a little bit more. Double jab right hand certainly would be a combination I'd be targeting. And Salif, you have to remember, I mean, he's knocked out 21 opponents, hasn't he, from his 24 yeah, yeah. victories. So he can punch a little bit. I think he'll be pretty confident at this stage. He's more or less soaked up everything that Petkovic has thrown. So what he's got to do is just bide his time. And I think if Petkovic gets a little bit complacent, then an opportunity might, may present itself to land his big shots. That's a better start to this third round. There's already a bit more fluidity to the movement, certainly of uh, Salif. A bit more momentum. Well, Salif has probably expected a faster start from Petkovic, and it hasn't happened. And he came out there, Salif, up on his toes, quite confident. This is better. Yeah, and it's better from him early on in this round. Only defeated four times across his career, Petkovic. 31 years of age. But uh, this will halt his career right in his tracks, as we said. Uh, Salif looking to put together back-to-back -back wins for the first time in four years. Much more lively approach to this round. Bit more snap in his uh, jab. He's got that right hand there, just primed, ready to go. Which is what Petkovic has got half an eye on, but... I think Salif, what he's doing there with that low hand, that low le left hand, he's actually trying to draw his man in. Trying to draw his man, maybe bring him onto a right hand counter, but that's the trap he sets. Just drops that left hand there and again, invites his opponent in. But that's better from Petkovic. Now he has to keep his opponent on the ropes there and work. Got to work a lot harder here. 
Again, trying to switch between body and the head, but again, the, the attack is limited. And lets him off the ropes, you see. I mean, he, he was in a real positive position there, but now he just stepped back. First time he's aimed for the big right hand then, and just has to keep almost at heel to toe, keeping him moving around the ring. Again, switches that yeah. hook to the body then, Salif, is a good punch. Yeah, cheeky little left hook to the body then, downstairs there, from Salif. No holding. He has the look of a man who knows his way around the ring, Salif. Just holding his man there. Again, gaining a little bit of a breather. I think he's frustrated more coaches and managers down the years than you'd care to remember. You look at him and he has every attribute that you could possibly need to succeed, but there's just something that has stopped him from getting the big, big prize and the big, big fight. Yeah, and he'll mix it if he's in uh, Salif, he won't be dictated to, and Petkovic finishing on the front foot, backing his man into the corner. Yeah, better work from Petkovic towards the end of the round there, there's a left up, just on the side of Salif's head there. Missed with that right hand, keeps his man on the ropes, but he just can't keep the, the attack going, which was disappointing, and he allowed Salif off there. Only loss since that uh, defeat against uh, Johnny Nelson was against the French cruiserweight champion Amrani. Um, he's unbeaten since then. Ring five, but only fear round four. So already into round four. And Salif basically bounced out of that corner. Time in. At the start of the th third round. And maybe just beginning to fill with a little more confidence, knowing that uh, what is to come. Maybe he can feel the fact that he doesn't have those clash of heads. Yeah, definitely clash of heads there. But like a good pro, Salif, he didn't really complain, did he? Working well with the jab there, Salif. And he's controlling the pace at this stage. He's losing this contest, is Salif. Let's get that right. But Petkovic should be up in the tempo here. That was a little bit better. But he's allowing Salif to dictate with that jab and control the tempo of it. You just get the feeling, don't you, that uh, Salif is well within his comfort zone. Well, that's oh, a great shit. right hand, and down goes Petkovic. Is he going to recover from that? What a super punch that was. One-two combination, right hand, absolute belter. Well, this time last year, we saw Gabenga Alukan take out Konstantin Eirik with one punch, which is very similar to that. Well, that was a the best punch of the, of the fight and probably of his most recent dozen fights as well, Salif. And this fight is there for him to take here now. He switches from body to head. Oh, There's another right again. hand. He's down. I thought it was. I thought what was Salif doing there? Because he seemed to didn't respond too quickly after the count ended for the first knockdown. But there. He just woke up again, didn't he? And he, he switched the attack downstairs with a good right hook, but then came back upstairs with a terrific right hand. And again, he's looking at his corner. Why isn't he going forward? Why isn't he trying to knock this fella out and put him away? Well, that is the question that you'll, you'll find that so many people have asked of this guy down the years, and nobody's been able to answer. I mean, you, he you often he's got it all. You look at your corner, obviously, to get instruction if, if you've been knocked down or if you put someone down, yes, but surely the answer here from the corner is go and finish him off. And I can't believe he's just, he's waiting. What is going on here? Well, he's got over a minute of this fight left and he's allowed Petkovic to recover. But is it only a temporary recovery? That right hand is ready to go again. He comes back with a left hook of his own, Petkovic. And he's just backing off again oh, now. I mean, I cannot believe this at all. 
a shrug of the shoulders then from Salif, as if to say, well, if that's the best you got, it ain't going to hurt me. Go on, go on. Come on, go on. Why isn't he throwing his right hand? Come on, this guy's there to be to be taken out now. I can't believe these tactics from Salif. Look, he's on the back foot. It's, it's as if he's been hurt. Well, absolutely unbelievable. I'd say if I was in his corner, I would be doing my nut. I really would. Well, he has oh. allowed Petkovic to survive in this fight. He had to say, when this match was made, giving it to Salif, it was always a very, very dangerous match. And here we go. Let's have a look at some of the key action. There. Oh, straight down the pipe, that one-two. There it is. Two terrific shots. The right hand especially. Lovely combination. And then this was the second knockdown. I mean, that's a 10-7 round. Terrific body shot, two body shots, then he switches back upstairs, right hand, eye on the temple, but nevertheless, he was hurt. 10-7 round. Did very, very well, didn't he, then uh, Pekovic to recover from that, to actually survive. His legs are still with him, and he still appears to have all his faculties about him, so... Look on up. Well, this is going to take a superhuman effort here from uh, Petkovic to turn this around in his favour. Uh, that's for sure. But again, he's just gone back in his shell momentarily, Salif. There's a yeah. bit more distance between the two of them. You can see already at the outset of this round. He'll take, I'll tell you what, I bet he gets a point taken off here. That's the third point. time. There you oh. go. <laughs> uh, how did I know that was coming? <laughs> Unbelievable. There you go. It's as if it was on his thigh for a start. Okay. Time in. Box. Well, what is Petkovic's game on, plan on, from on, here? On, and again, another one. This is ridiculous now. I think uh, there was a low blow from Petkovic there. But I do believe if, Pet if Petkovic stays at range, then he, he, he's got problems here because Salif is landing well with that one-two combination. Well, he's done him again. That time I looked at... Oh. Well, the, the last shot low wasn't blow. low. The, la the last shot, Tim, wasn't low. That was sort of a, a, a short left uppercut. Maybe it was the shot before that was low. But certainly the last one wasn't. One point. Oh, oh another oh, point. There point. you go. Yeah, well, there's that. I mean, it's incredible, this. So uh, the, yeah. the previous round is, has now disappeared. And we're back to we're the fight well. which Petkovic has got stay, full stay command of. The way it's going, it'll be odds on a disqualification coming up here. So that's evened it up, hasn't it? So that's, an, uh, that's a 10 7 round now, isn't it? To Petkovic. Well, unless he can turn around and put him down. Mm. But I was, I was just saying that Petkovic, if he stays at range. Go on, go on. Oh, that looked low. Go on, go on. But, but Petkovic, if he stays at range. Salif is landing well with this 1 2 combination. So he'll have to watch it. There it is again. Look, he, he's got to keep those hands up, Petkovic. By st keeping his distance against this fella, he might oh, walk onto a shot. Oh, this is ludicrous. There was nothing wrong with the shot. Looked like a short left hand yeah. that got him on the chin, and the, he's just spat his gum shield out, Petkovic. And we're not getting it. The other thing is, you're not getting a replay here, so no, you're not no. you're not being able to see. And well, I agree with Salif there. I didn't think that was a low shot, and the referee's got to be strong here. Yeah, last time, look, oh, yeah. he's going to get disqualified, Tim. He's going to get disqualified. Not a warning is, but the next time I will disqualify you. There you go. <laughs> That's it's unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. Time in. 
And believe you me, Petkovic does not fancy this fight. He knows he's up against a hard hitting opponent here. And anything round about the waist now, he's going to go down and claim a low blow again. Uh, sensibly keeping a distance and just keeping these shots to the head now is Sally. Yeah. All he needs to do here, Tim, is throw that one two combination. One two's catching Petkovic all night long. Again, great oh, uppercut then with shot. a right superb shot from Salif. Well, he was thinking about he was it. He's thinking, there you go. Yeah, He's thinking, and again. And again. The referee yeah. saying, come on, get on with it. That's better refereeing there because he was looking for a way out yeah, here, looking, Petkovic. I told you. The thing is, don't they realize that they're on television and you can see this as plain as day? Hey. Well, the end of a, well, it, it wasn't a controversial round. It, it would be an irritating round for, for Salif. No, mean, that there was did, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that shot. I mean, that was a super punch to the body. Look at that, look at that for a shot. Into the solar plexus, cracking punch. He's, uh, he's fooled the referee there. Lovely jab again from Salif. I thought it was a decent round, but obviously I would say it's probably a 10-7 round. I mean, look at that, that isn't low. And the referee's looking right at it as well. So, so. disappointing. <laughs> Well, well, all this guy's got to do now is just keep aiming for the head. So loads of jabs and one-two combinations. This guy's got some problems because he doesn't fancy this fight, Pet Petkovic. Well, we talked about the fact that the quality of his opposition had dropped dramatically as he was rebuilding that career. Remember, five of the last nine he's fought are one three or under. It wasn't until he took on uh, Timo Hoffman. Uh, last year, this year, he's been in with Joseph Mawa, another who's seen better days. And we sort of the answer, this is easily the best opponent that he's had, the most experienced opponent that he's had uh, since uh, Johnny Nelson is proving to be. But the, th the ludicrous thing is, going into round six, he's, he's leading. Yeah, he's leading. I mean, that last round was probably a 10-7 or 10-8 round for him, where the previous round was a 10-7 round for Salif. But yeah, he's he's winning the contest, Petkovic. Well, Salif, remember, has only got himself uh, to blame there because those two knockdowns a couple of rounds ago, he could quite easily have finished this fight, but he just backed off and seemed happy to let his man back in. First time we've seen the right hand taken out in since then. Yep, there's that one-two. There's that right hand. Dangerous. He's a big puncher. It's a bit better from Salif roughing his man up again. The right hand bludgeons through, and Petkovic goes down from basically the volume of punches rather than one particular shot. Yeah, finding his range there was, was Salif. He's put three or four punches together. He can't believe it, Salif. That he, that, you know, he's in with a shout of winning this contest. He's down again. Oh, he's been, done him another low blow. Yeah, the oh, now what's the quick, what, is he? He's disqualified him, what did I tell you? Absolutely it's disgraceful decision, that is. You've robbed the kid referee. Salif should be the winner here. Well, you can just feel sorry for him. Now let's have another look, see if we can get a closer look at it. I mean, that, that doesn't look low to me, Tim, again. That does not look low. Doesn't look low to me. Well, this was an out of condition fighter who came in and got a very, very rude awakening, Petkovic. He felt the power and he knew he wasn't going to win this fight and he thought, I need a way out here. And that's what he's done, this fella. He's conned the referee. Well, he's conned himself as well if he thinks he was anything like just about to do anything other than get knocked out there. And you've got, you do feel sorry for this guy, you know.
He's taken the fight at short notice. And as we said at the start, this is a guy that, has, that does live a very, very disciplined, very a professional life outside of when he's fighting. You can tell from the condition that that is why he gets called into these. He's always ready to take on any opponent, you know. When you've been a sparring partner to people like James Tony, and you've took David Tua to a split decision, you fought Eddie Chambers, Henry Akinwandi, some quality fighters, then believe you me, his record is an injustice to it, to how good he is. If you were him, you'd want to slope out of the ring without well, getting any... What, what I am disappointed fair. with Salif uh, is about, with his experience, he should have known that, forget the body, because, you know, this fellow is obviously looking for a way out, so he should have concentrated on the headshots. The one-twos especially, um, I think he could have won this contest Meine with just those punches. Disappointing, very disappointed. And here the urteil in Kampf number five. International Championships nach Version der WBA. Es siegte durch Disqualifikation in der sechsten Runde wegen wiederholten Tiefschlags. Alexander Petkovic in der blauen Ecke. Well, good. It's a good job. It's greeted with boos and whistles because that is what it deserves. Absolutely shambolic from Petkovic. And now he can call himself a champion.